Hi, this is Professor Lazarus, and today we will be talking about break-even analysis in this segment. Behind me on the whiteboard, I have posted a lot of information, and I will go through that information as I seek to clarify and explain some of these concepts related to break-even. So let's get right into the discussion by reviewing the formula first for contribution margin per unit. So the formula for contribution margin per unit is your selling price per unit minus your variable cost per unit. One more time, contribution margin per unit is equal to selling price per unit minus variable cost per unit. Next, let's review the formula for contribution margin ratio, which is expressed as a percentage. That would be your contribution margin per unit over your selling price per unit expressed as a percentage. So those are the two uh, formulae for your contribution per unit per unit as well as your contribution margin ratio. Now, let's assume that I am an entrepreneur and I'm looking to start a restaurant, open up a new restaurant. So I do a lot of research. I find a tentative location where I think my restaurant can be housed. And after some more extensive research, I realize or I've decided that I am going to serve just one item on the menu and that will be a cheeseburger platter. I am going to specialize in cheeseburger platters and by gosh, I am going to be making the best cheeseburgers not just in town, but in the entire region. So that's the only thing that's going to be on the menu is a cheeseburger platter. So after more research I'm, and uh, scoping out the competition, I realized that $5 per cheeseburger platter would be a pretty competitive selling price for me. After doing some costing on the products, on the food and beverage costs, I realized that my variable cost per cheeseburger platter will be about $3. Now, what is included in these variable costs for each cheeseburger platter? What would be included would be your food and beverage costs because my cheeseburger platter would consist of a cheeseburger, french fries, and a soft drink. So the cost of these three items combined I've cost it to be around $3. So selling price $5 per cheeseburger flatter. Variable cost uh, $3. So my contribution margin per cheeseburger flatter would be $2. Now let's assume for the sake of simplicity, I only have one other additional cost and that is rent. My proposed rent into this building that I expect to house my restaurant will be $1,000. So my question to you then would be how many cheeseburger platters must I sell to cover my rent costs? Again, the question is how many cheeseburger platters must I sell to cover my rent costs? Now, to help us answer that question, remember that each cheeseburger platter contributes $2 towards my rent costs. Each cheeseburger platter contributes $2 towards my rent costs. So therefore, if I sell 500 cheeseburger platters, I will have covered all of my rent costs. Another way to say this is, if I sold 500 cheeseburger platters, I cover all of my costs, because all of my costs, in my example, can be broadly grouped into two groups. Your food and beverage costs as one group, and your rent costs was your second group. Food and beverage were my variable costs, rent was my fixed cost. So how did I arrive at 500? If I take the $1,000 of rent fixed cost and divide it by the contribution margin of $2, that's fixed cost over contribution margin, that allows me to calculate 500 units as the answer. And 500 units is what we refer to as our break-even point, BEP. So break-even point, what is break-even point then? Break-even point is that volume of sales activity where I cover all of my costs. That means I don't make any money, but guess what? I don't lose any money. So at the very minimum, at the very minimum, my minimum objective should be to break even. And in this case, if I sell 500 cheeseburger platters, I will have broken even. Okay, let's move on. And if I ask you, what would be my break even sales dollars? We just finished calculating our break even in units. Now my question is, what would be the break-even in sales dollars? Well, there are two ways to calculate your break-even sales dollars. One would be to take the break-even in unit, 500 units that we just calculated, 
and multiply that by the $5 a unit selling price for a total of $2,500. So our break-even sales dollars would be $2,500. A second way would be to take your fixed cost of $1,000 and divide that by a contribution margin ratio of 40%. Now, how do we come up with a contribution margin ratio of 40%? We took the $2 contribution margin per unit over your $5 a unit selling price. So two over five as a percentage would have been 40%. And that calculation is given to you right here. So when you go through the second method, you end up with the same result, which is $2,500 in your break-even sales. Okay, so we've gone through this basic scenario one, where we've calculated the break-even in units, and we have calculated the break-even in dollars using two different uh, formula. Let's mix up things a little bit. Now, what if scenario number two, what if my selling price increased by 10%? What would be my new break-even point? Again, the question would be, what if my selling price increased by 10%? What would be my new break-even point? So if I increase my selling price by 10%, then my new selling price for each cheeseburger platter is $5.50. Remember I was selling it at $5 before, so a 10% increase would be an increase of 50 cents, so the new selling price would be $5.50. But all my other costs, let's assume, are the same. I've only changed my selling price. So my variable cost still stays the same as $3 as before. But now look what happens to my contribution margin. It has increased from $2 to 250 my rent stays the same at $1,000. But now I have each unit contributing $2.50 towards my rent. So because my contribution margin per unit has increased, the number of units that I need to sell to cover my rent costs has decreased from 500 to 400. So my new break-even point is only 400 units. So what this tells me again, if I increase my selling price, my contribution margin goes up, all other costs stay the same in this example, then my break-even point would decrease. That means I have to sell a lot less to cover all my costs, and hopefully then my profit potential should be greater than before. Okay, now let's look at scenario number three. In scenario number three, I said, what if my fixed cost, what if my fixed cost increases by 20%, but everything else stays the same? What's the everything else? My selling price stays at the original $5. The variable cost stays at the original $3. But my fixed cost rent has increased by 20%. So an increase in rent by 20% would amount to my new rent being $1,200. So my new rent, my new fixed cost is $1,200. My contribution margin is the same $2. That's $5 selling price minus $3 variable costs gives you $2. So my new break-even point now has increased to 600 units. Again, the new break-even point now would be 600 units. Okay, let's look at another variation, scenario number four. In scenario number four, I am not satisfied with just breaking even. I want to realize a profit. So my question is, yes, I'm ambitious. I do want to make some money. So my question then is, how many units must I sell if I want to realize a target profit of $100? Given the original data of $5 selling price, $3 variable cost, uh, $1,000 rent, what or how many units must I sell to realize a target profit of $100? So in this case, to do the calculation, I'm going to modify the break-even formula slightly, where on the numerator, I take the fixed cost as before, but this time I add my target profit of $100 in the numerator, and then I divide that by the contribution margin of $2. So under this scenario, the number of units that I need to sell would be 550 units in order to realize my ambition of a profit of $100. So this kind of wraps up our discussion on break-even. I've gone through the basic explanation of what is break-even. I've taken you through different scenarios.
to give you a better appreciation and an understanding of the concept of break even. This is a very important financial modeling tool. What do I mean by that? In other words, in business, we use this tool even before I open up my restaurant, for instance. I can go through all these calculations to see if it's even feasible for me to open up a restaurant based on my, on my research. So I hope you've enjoyed this presentation. And again, this is Professor Lazarus. And as I always like to say, we accountants work our assets off. Thank you.